Our next speaker is Coach Dick McLean. He coached four years in the late 60s. His last year was Madison's third state title in 69, coupled with the Madison area only team to the American Legion World Series and winning, winning the title, World Series from Madison High School. While coaching and becoming the AD at Lynn Bent Community College, he guided Corvallis Richie Market Legion team to several more trips to the Legion World Series. Madison Baseball welcomes back Coach McClain. I had a speech written last night after we had our dinner, and uh, I'm not going to use it because I don't think I can uh, keep up with Whittle. <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to say is the Lord is blessed the baseball program at Madison High School. We used to have coaches meetings up at Elmer's, and it was always open with prayer. And I think it's indicative of the quality of the people that were involved in the coaching at this high school and carried on with the different sports and it's just a blessing. I think it's also significant, and I'm off of this a little bit, to see Rick Wise, who's been in the big leagues and done the whole thing, show the emotion that he had for Madison High School and then what he got from Madison here. And uh, it's great to have been a friend of yours over the years, Rick. Before I go any farther, I want to introduce a good friend of mine, We've been friends now forever. I ran into him once in a while at the Oklahoma Stadium. We coached against each other when he was at Marshall. Vince Pesky. Can you just say thank you for being here? Our 1965 team uh, has lost a few people, and I'd just like to honor them right now. Uh, Mike Dressler, uh, no, Steve Chamberlain, John Schaefer, and Phil Bushman. Had the opportunity to talk to Phil two or three years before he passed. He was back in, in St. Louis and uh, managing some uh, apartments and stuff. He, he'd also been a teacher. Uh, boy, could he fly. But I'd just like to see us take a moment of silence to recognize those people. And I want to add one more person to this because it had a lot to do with the development of Rick and Tom Wise. Uh, their mom used to get them out there and throw. In fact, I hear a story one time, somebody was worrying about the arm and they didn't know that he'd been, they'd been working out in the morning and then trying to get ready for uh, the game too. But I'd also like to add Barbara Weiss to that. And if we could just take a moment of silence and recognize those people. Amen. Jeff ended up talking about how prepared he was to coach at Madison. And I was really prepared too. I just didn't know that it was going to be here. I grew up in Tillamook. My dad was a J.C. Penny manager and uh, took good care of me and my mom. And, and I played, started playing little, they call it uh, Pee Wees and Cubs down there and then. But I played in those. Uh, programs and then a little bit of American Legion. Had an excellent baseball coach by the name of Tony Doerr in high school. Uh, we, we played a really strong seaside team in the playoffs and ended up getting beat. The guy was a really good left-hand pitcher by the name of Gary Holmes. Went to the University of Oregon, Don Kirsch was the coach there. He was an excellent coach on uh, organization and everything. I felt like I was blessed to have an opportunity to play there. Actually, they tried to get a job. Uh, they didn't hire me at Wilson, and they didn't hire me at Benson. 
hired my good buddy Ole Johnson at Benson. And uh, but uh, it was late in the day, late in the season. Kershaw asked me to stay there and help, and I was I was pretty much plugged in there. And, and then I told Jerry Lyons earlier. I says thank you for allowing me to get the opportunity at Madison. Jerry left to go to Portland State late in the senior year, and uh, so it was quite obvious before I interviewed with uh, Dr. Ed or with Dick, uh, Waller Erickson, the principal. And I, I still would say we're up in his office, and he's bra he bragging about the baseball program and what a great field right down there. He said the state champs played, and I looked at the field. And, you know, the field was okay, <laughs> but it wasn't anything special. We had we were lucky enough when I, when I was there. Uh, Doug Conway, bless his heart, he has also left us. Why he was our manager, and he fixed that field just perfect. And uh, so we'd get him out. He had a study hall or something. We'd get him out of class, and he'd go down and get that thing taken care of. Anyway, it was just uh, a special time. Um, I uh, would like to recognize some people in uh, our, our 1965 group, which uh, we lost a heartbreaker to Park Rose, but then uh, in the summer we ended up going to the World Series, first team we did the World Series in region. And uh, if Curtis, if you stand up your high school rep, uh, Kenny Washington, Ed Watson, uh, uh, now I'm not coming up with Brownie's name, first name, but anyway, Terry Brown. Uh, is there anybody else from the 65 group here? Anyway. Gillespie. Gillespie. Oh, Brad, I didn't see you there, thank you. Yeah, and Braden Gillespie. We, his son's uh, playing the big leagues too. <laughs> so that kind of opened the door when we ended up having some success with, uh, with the American Legion. And uh, we kept going. And uh, uh, our, in 1967, why we had a, we're in the playoffs. And in 68, we lost to Klamath Falls in the playoffs. And they, I think, went to the World Series. And I believe that it kind of opened the door to our eyes to say, hey, this is maybe something we can do. And uh, two things. Um, moved back just a little bit. But when Phil, Phil Bushman led off for us in 65, and I'm telling you, I mean, we must have scored 60 to 70% of the time in the first inning with Phil leading off. And he was one whale of a player. If he hadn't gotten nailed, I'm sure he would have had a nice major league career. But the, the attitude and uh, the belief that we were gonna win, irregardless of the score, irregardless of the inning, uh, held there all the time that I had the opportunity to coach here. And it, it came from Bill Whittler's uh, psyche and the belief in the team and the belief in Madison. I want to just go back. I meant to do this a little bit earlier without writing things down. One, every, every program has kind of an unsung hero, and we've had several, but I want to introduce Ray Niehouse. Ray, if you stand up. Ray was, uh, Ray was our JV coach. He wanted to jump rope, but I told him we didn't have time. He's only 91. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. We appreciate everything you did to the program. So, anyway, we had a, what's amazing with the athletics is the camaraderie that we have here in athletics never goes away. It doesn't matter if you see each other every year or if you see each other every five years or 10 years, I have never ended up having a conversation or talking with one of our former, my former athletes without us thinking, hey, that's, that's just almost like yesterday. It, it is just, we, we had dinner last night in recognition of the 50th anniversary of the 1969 National Champions. And I'm telling you, 
camaraderie and the love that was in that room cannot be uh, emulated. It was just absolutely special. And the commitment and the thought of being a Madison High School representative is paramount in that feeling. And uh, it's just absolutely special. I am, before we go any further, Let's have our 1969 World Series champion stand, please. Thank you. 